every American president in history. We're going in chronological order again, but I won't be offended if you jump ahead to check out Chester Arthur's favorite drink. Before we get into it, though, let's get two things out of the way. First of all, all the presidents liked to drink water. And you like to drink water, too. Why? Because you're a human being, I assume. And all human beings like to drink water, whether they're willing to admit it or not. Although your doctor told me that apparently you're not drinking enough of it, so... Second, this video is once again sponsored by Morgan and Morgan. Oh, I forgot to get the... I forgot to get the hat on here. This video is sponsored by Morgan and Morgan. Remember the old days when we used actual printed maps when we wanted to go on road trips? Now we have navigation built into our cars, for goodness sake. Things are so much easier. And things are now easier when submitting a claim when you're in an injury, thanks to Morgan and Morgan. Morgan and Morgan is the largest injury law firm in the United States, with more than 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers, with over 15 billion dollars recovered for clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy, it's more like ordering takeout than hiring a lawyer. You don't even have to get up from the couch. In fact, you can do it in eight clicks or less. So, if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan by going to forthepeople.com slash MrBeats or dial pound 529 that's pound law. Thanks to Morgan and Morgan for sponsoring this video. Okay, here are the favorite beverages of every president in American history. George Washington. Our first president was a big fan of Madeira wine, a fortified wine he regularly imported from the Portuguese Madeira Islands. He also loved a spiced, brandy-based cocktail named Cherry Bounce. Those were for special occasions, though. More often than not, Washington drank beer and a dark porter. He also owned a distillery near Mount Vernon that produced whiskey, which he sold, of course, when Washington wasn't drinking alcohol, he was drinking milk, tea, and coffee. John Adams. Adams also loved Madeira wine and apparently woke up most mornings promptly pouring himself a glass of cider and often hard cider, meaning cider with alcohol in it. He also loved tea but vowed to give it up during the American Revolution due to it being quote, unpatriotic since it was strongly associated with the British. After that, he mostly drank coffee instead. Thomas Jefferson. More than anything, Jefferson was known for loving wine. During his first term as president, he apparently got in trouble after spending more than $10,000 on wine, which is more than $200,000 in today's money. Even after his presidency, he came back to the White House to advise Presidents Madison and Monroe on the proper wine to buy for parties and stuff. Now, his favorite wines came from France of course. He even produced his own grapes and made his own wine at his Monticello estate in Virginia. Eh, with mixed success. He also brewed his own beer. While Jefferson enjoyed imperial tea, he was more of a coffee snob. He particularly enjoyed coffee grown in the Caribbean islands and in Indonesia. And yeah, of course he roasted his own beans. James Madison. Madison drank coffee and tea, but didn't drink alcohol that much. So He got hangovers pretty easily. When he did drink alcohol, he drank whiskey and champagne. James Monroe. Monroe also loved champagne and most French and Spanish red wines. He definitely partied from time to time, especially as a younger man. He sometimes would go, quote, on quite a frolic, as they called it in those days. Today we call that on a bender. His favorite drink called Chatham Artillery Punch. Mixed tea, wine, rum, rye whiskey, brandy, gin, champagne, and a bunch of other sweet stuff. 
stuff. Ugh, actually. Doesn't sound too good. Oh, and apparently Monroe got into some trouble while he was president for buying 1,200 bottles of French wine with money that was supposed to be spent on furniture. Oops. John Quincy Adams. Like father... Like son. JQ also loved Madeira wine and cider, like his dad, John Adams. He also was a regular coffee and tea drinker. Andrew Jackson, whiskey. Just, uh, whiskey. Like Washington, Jackson also distilled. Filled a whiskey at one point in 1799. His dist distillery burned down. John Quincy Adams, like father, like son. JQ also loved Madeira wine and cider, like his dad, John Adams. He also was a regular coffee and tea drinker. Andrew Jackson, whiskey, just uh, whiskey. Like Washington, Jackson also distilled whiskey at one point. In 1799, his distillery burned down, destroying 300 gallons of whiskey. After still having to pay an excise tax on whiskey, he asked Congress to refund the tax he had paid. Congress politely denied his request. When Jackson wasn't drinking whiskey, he was drinking coffee. Martin Van Buren. Van Buren... And also loved whiskey. In fact, he drank so much whiskey that people... Come on, computer work. I don't want to... Stop turning off of me. What? What? I don't know what you want. Martin Van Buren. Van Buren also loved whiskey. In fact, he drank so much whiskey that people nicknamed him Blue Whiskey Van. Apparently, Van Buren also drank buttermilk? Uh, yeah. If you don't know what buttermilk is, it traditionally has been the liquid left behind after churning butter out of cultured cream. Yummy. William Henry Harrison. Like...
John Adams. Harrison loved hard cider. After Harrison's political opponents talked trash about him drinking too much of it as he ran for president in 1840, the Whigs embraced the accusation, making it part of his campaign with the slogan, Log Cabin and Hard Cider. To make it seem like Harrison was a man of the people, John Tyler. Tyler began every day with tea and milk, which he drank from a very large cup. He also enjoyed coffee and champagne. James Polk. Polk also loved champagne and drank a bit of brandy and wine. Caffeine was more of his drug than alcohol, though. He began every day with coffee and often drank it all day long. Zachary Taylor. Well... Well, we know he liked milk. Some speculate that Taylor may have died while in office after drinking iced milk that contained bacteria. As a matter of fact, like Jackson and Van Buren, he also loved his whiskey. Millard Fillmore. Fillmore enjoyed tea, specifically oolong tea, which traditionally comes from China. He didn't drink alcohol that much, but when he did, it was usually wine. Yeah, this next president, unfortunately, did drink alcohol too much. Franklin Pierce, if it had... alcohol in it, he probably drank it. He reportedly began every morning with a glass of cognac. After Pierce lost re-election as president, he allegedly said, quote, there's, there's nothing, nothing left, left to, to do but get drunk. drunk. He suffered from alcoholism for much of his adult life and died of cirrhosis of the liver at 65 due to his excessive drinking. James Buchanan. Buchanan took his coffee black and strong and drank it pretty much every day. Similar to Washington and both John and John Quincy Adams, he loved Madeira wine. He also occasionally drank champagne, whiskey, and sherry. And finally, we get to our first teetotaler, Abraham Lincoln. A